the, the tight end, this right tight end, watch him bluff just yeah. a little bit on that yeah. defensive end. He wants him to feel as if, oh, I got a block to play. Maybe he's trying to pin me down. Why has he got the ball? Why is back to throw? Why is look? Why is more the end zone? Passes. Oh, of course, touchdown by Matthew Butler. Matthew Butler, Jack. This video is sponsored by Mississippi Land Bank. Visit them online at mslandbank.com. And by Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance. Go with the home team. The national championship game between Alabama and Georgia, the, the game got stretched out at the end and the final score didn't really look all that close. But you and I know it really was a close game, but in the second half, some stuff started to happen for Georgia's offense, including explosive run plays. Georgia had five explosive run plays in the game. Alabama only had one. And three of Georgia's five explosive runs of 10 yards or more came in the third quarter. We're going to take a look at those three 10-plus yard runs in the third quarter for Georgia with Matt Stinchcomb. Matt Stinchcomb was a first-round pick out of Georgia as an offensive lineman back in the late 90s. Had a lengthy NFL career. He's in the College Football Hall of Fame. Is now an analyst on the SEC Network and at ESPN. We jumped on a Zoom call together, watched this film together, and he's gonna break it down for you from an offensive line perspective. The first play we're gonna look at is the first play of the second half. These two offensive linemen, center and left guard for Georgia, they are comboing or duoing against that defender. Right tackle, right guard are up on the three technique defensive lineman and working up to the linebacker. Again, Matt's going to show you this, and we'll take a look with him. The blocks happen. One thing, too, you'll see Matt point out is right here is important, the left tackle keeping Will Anderson uh, out of there as well. Sort of um, look at it with me. Now let's get into Matt Stinchcomb's thoughts on this play. More on the more popular inside runs. A lot of people would say that looks like inside zone. It's a, it's a play called duo, effectively. And what they're doing is you're creating – two double teams really at the point of attack. So, you know, a couple of things that happen with the ball handling where it looks like maybe the intended point of attack would be on the right side of that line of scrimmage. Like when you look at the way it's being blocked, like see the left tackle mm -hmm. on Will Anderson, number 31 right there. Yeah. And he's just trying to keep him wide. And you see your left guard, Justin Schaefer, and he's working with the center. And their job is to double team that one technique or shade nose. Okay. And, and they're when you say, up. for those that don't know, when you say shade nose, he's he's just on the left shoulder of the center. He's not over his head, but he's kind right. of right over his shoulder there. That's exactly right. So he's he's picking a, a you know they pick one of the shoulders. They're not playing it straight head up, like they would in an odd front. And that left guard's job, depending on how that down lineman plays it is going to bounce up to what ends up being effectively the play side linebacker. And he does 10, a pretty right good here. job of that. That's right. Henry Toto, who kind of checks up in the line of scrimmage. So they get good movement there at the line of scrimmage. And now they've got coverage and a hat on a hat at the second level. And you see that hole right there opening up. Right. It's a really good job. And, of course, on the right side, you've got, you know, Salyer, who's really your starting left tackle for Georgia, who's had to slide to right guard. Okay. And your right tackle, McClendon, are going to work a double team on the three technique. Number 94, it looks like right there. He's on the outside shoulder of that right guard. And they're going to work a double team. They're going to secure him, try to bounce him off the line of scrimmage. And then one of those two are going to try to climb up to the backside linebacker so that he's covered up. And the goal there, obviously, you secure the line of scrimmage, and then you cover up those second-level defenders. You see McClendon coming off there late right there. Mm -hmm. You see Schaefer. He's locked up with toe toe. Your left tackle and Broderick Jones has kept that edge wide versus Will Anderson. It's not really about movement. It's just occupying him. And you see that hole. I mean, any of us would. You don't have to be a running back to know. And – White does a good job of not pressing it too early because you can see the down lineman spinning out of uh, Van Pranger's block, and he's going to just split where the center and the left guard were. You see him just cut right up underneath that block, and it's a nice finish by Schaefer, just enough 
to Nick Henry Toe Toe, number 10, the linebacker for Alabama, to where he only he can really only get a hand on Zamir White's inside foot, knocks him off balance for a second, and ends up getting him clean to the safety where he takes on that would-be tackle and picks up, you know, 11 yards. George Pickens in there cleaning it up. And yeah. Then you got offensive linemen just keeping that pile nice and clean. Um, Matt, I was going to say here too, you look. Okay, so here's contact at the 32. Yeah. All right. Uh, contact at the 32. More contact, and the run finishes at the 36. So you're That's four, a great point. You're four yards after you get hit. So instead of it being second and three, it's a first and ten. because you Right. And you're getting help right there. And you get help from your receiver. Look at that finish from a guy who's coming off ACL surgery mm-hmm. and is only getting X number of, of targets downfield. And a guy really didn't have to come back and play, and George Pickens. And you think he wants to win that ball game? Yeah. He's been doing that all year. But the it's an interesting uh, – that's a great point, Matt, because when you look at the SEC championship game, the yards after contact were not great for the Georgia running backs. And the big explosive plays, the 10 plus yard plays, like that one right there, you got to break a tackle. All right, the next play we're going to break down, the very next play in the third quarter. All right, let's watch the play first. Same formation, come back on the very next play. This one comes out the backside, he makes the safety miss. Anyone will tell you that you can win individual efforts, et cetera, but in run defense, it's about numbers. And right now, the offense has even numbers with the defense in the box. Okay. I mean, when you're looking at it, you got your five down line, and then you got that big tight end in Washington kind of hipped off your right tackle, number zero, at the kind of top of the formation, the inside of that kind of bunch set. So he's number six in the box. And then you count. You got three down linemen, men with, the, with their hands in the dirt for Alabama, and then a stand-up edge defender in Will Anderson. He's number four, and then two linebackers. That's six. Mm -hmm. So Georgia has six potential blockers for their six potential tacklers for what ends up being another similar concept. Without looking at the end zone, you know, it's probably duo or inside zone. The way everybody's stepping, I'm inclined to say duo because you end up with two uh, double teams, or you get a double Mm -hmm. team at the top of the screen anyway. And the difference maker is, as you can see, kind of right at the top of that number four on the 40-yard line. That's a safety, and he is screaming down to the box. He's now Uh the seventh defender. That's a free hitter. He's the free hat, and he ends up being the free hat in the hole because you see you kind of lose inside at left tackle. That's a great finish on Will Anderson. So your back has to bounce it out, whereas before he could insert inside and bend it outside. Mm -hmm. This time he has to bounce. Look at his track to the line of scrimmage because of Anderson. And Anderson can do this. He can play that block inside right now because he knows he's got an outside run defender in that safety who's coming down to take care of what would be the C gap, that outside shoulder of the tackle. Yeah. So it's a good, good adjustment by the left tackle. Anderson's playing the right gap. He's playing that B gap inside shoulder of the offensive tackle. And this safety is being asked to make that play right at the line of scrimmage. This should be a no game. And this goes back to the back just sometimes has to make a guy miss. That's Mm -hmm. not a poorly blocked play. That's a really well-blocked play. It's actually an excellent run defense call into this play, Mm -hmm. but you just got a player that's making a, a, a defender miss in the hole. This is a heck of a run. Yeah. Hey, and I wanted to ask you uh, here, Matt. So you mentioned it. It's a lot like the one before. It's similar formation. You're yep. getting a duo center right guard, a combo on that shade up to what is like a that middle linebacker, effectively. He's back there. That's right. And then, and then am I right? The tackle and the, the, you know, that he's the first receiver, he's a tight end. Are they also combo defensive? They're- tackle up to this linebacker that's kind that's of that's right okay yeah they end up, they end up yes you know even having you still have a bonus hat when you get the two receivers involved right but what's different here is this time they were in an under front i believe so you've got instead of having your three technique to the tight end side like you did last time you'll see 
94, before he was on the outside shoulder of Salyer at right guard. Now yeah. he's the shade. Mm -hmm. And at the bottom of your screen, now the three technique is to the open side, to the weak side of the formation, so under front. I don't know what they called it at Alabama, but effect effectively, when you've got that three technique to the weak side of the formation, to the open side of the line, that's an under front. So now it's what is really the, the play side guard. He's covered up, whereas before he wasn't. He was helping on a shade nose with the center. Now it's the left tackle's covered, the left guard's covered. So they're singled up, they're singled up. So you end up with two single blocks, the center on a single block, the right guard's going to try to bump that nose back onto the center and climb, and McClendon ends up, right tackle ends up working with the hipped tight end mm. on the edge defender to the right side of the line of scrimmage. So because of Alabama's alignment, it changed the combinations on this, on this play, but what, the, what really changed it, what really made it a little bit more different is the fact that you've got that safety screaming down to be the seventh defender, Mm -hmm. And that allows your defensive front to play the gaps to the left or to the field side. So now right. Anderson, instead of him having to have play that outside shoulder of the tackle and squeeze, try to contain that runner, he doesn't have that responsibility. He can play underneath that block just like he's doing. Broderick Jones does a good job of finishing down inside, even though he gave up some ground at the point of attack. But it spills right to where it's supposed to go. You yeah. cannot draw it up any better defensively. And, you know, Georgia just makes a play at running back. If you could see my mouse here, and I'll come back on the edit and draw this up, but this is the safety on the, the near the left hash that comes flying down and misses at the line of scrimmage. You notice there's two of them back there. So, see, Alabama has split the field back there with that other safety between the hashes. So, if you watch the safety who's between the hashes, watch his action. And, and keep in mind – He's got three receivers in his face. Right. And, and there's a great possibility they may throw it on his side. He's got a coverage call. So they snap the ball in the gun. He sees what could be run fake. Now, quarterback's already given the ball, but the safety's staying where he is because he didn't know if we're going to pull it and throw it. Right. And as soon as he sees run out the backside, watch what he does. He can't see the running back. What right. I think – and that's what gets lost, I think, a lot of times for – people watching a game on TV and stuff, we're seeing that this is all 22. This safety, he's looking through 20 bodies, That's right. That's right. and he can't see where the ball is right now. So right. watch his steps. You talk about eye discipline. This is what coaches are talking about. Watch his steps. The ball is being bounced backside, but the safety, who's going to be the last chance back here, he's coming vertically down the field. Yeah, He thinks the ball's coming right at him. He does not realize the ball's out the backside until he has come up the field five yards. Now he sees where the ball is over here and his teammates missing it. So his angle, he's got to turn on a dime and run this thing down, you know, but he, but he flattens it out. And by flattening it out, look at this, his angle's wrong. Right. You see what I mean? How about, yeah. Oh, there's, that's a great point. It's a great point. You know, he, he's got that coverage responsibility first, right? You know, I've got to be the deep, I got to be the deep center, center field safety right here. Right. And, and the, the piece of it too, that other than it's a great effort at running back, but again, the blocking at receiver mm -hmm. into the boundary down here at the bottom, mm -hmm. where the reason why this play ends up squirting for another, what, nine yards is this stock block at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, you can barely see him. He's, he's by the receiver. up here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And any of these coaches will tell you, and they know it, if you want to have explosive plays in the run game, your receivers have to block. That's the right. long and short of it. That's and it's, right. I do think what gets lost a lot, you, know, you make a great point with how the safeties married one another and, and how you know, if we're going to spin this one guy down into the box to be in run support, somebody's got to be back there to help if this is a play action over the top type throw. Yeah. That defense – those guys all got to be married together too. There's a right. you know for for that defense to kind of pirate inside to play those inside gaps. It's only because they know that a second or third level defender is going to cover the outside. Otherwise, this isn't freelance, and these guys aren't right. you know reading this on the fly. That's a responsibility, and that's the job that they have to play for the run fit to work. All right, and the third play we're going to look at is later in the third quarter. An explosive play, 67-yard run. That was the biggest play in the game for either team. We get a couple different angles on it, too. Uh, Slow-mo, again, you know, one thing he's going to show you, uh, so to look for. 
the left guard and the left tackle are pulling to the other side. It's a guard tackle counter with the back stepping here away and then coming to follow. And again, technically by design, this play would go up to the right, but there's a cutback lane there um, that is seen pretty easily by the back. And then he just follows it and runs to daylight and you get a big play. The right side of the offensive front, they're going to end up working. Their responsibility is actually the backside backer. In this instance, it looks like Christian Harris standing right there on the, on the hash. Right. So the right guard and tackle, they're in – I think this is an over front to the field. So over front, they're going to work on that three technique, that down line and that defensive tackle to the backside backer this time. On those other two runs that we saw, they're working to that place, the backer that's just over their bubble or just over their hat. Now they're working all the way to the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. So who's responsible for the linebacker that's on their side of the line of scrimmage? Well, it's those two pullers. Mm -hmm. So one of those pullers, typically on a GT counter like this one, the lead puller is going to kick out that edge defender just like that, try not to get squeezed, and then the tackle, the second puller is going to wrap inside. He's the leader, and he picks up that play side backer. Mm -hmm. It's great movement at the point of attack. Really good job by the right guard and tackle. McClendon does a good job of sticking and staying. They do a good job of walling off that backside backer. And, and 70 – is 70 the center or the guard? He's 70 is the right tackle. So right he's tackle. coming off he, – he was working on that double team, and he's climbing all the way up. Uh-huh. Now, see him watch him. So, so the right tackle, McClendon, is going to punch the hip of that down lineman so that he's good and stuck on the right guard. And yeah. then he's going to climb up to that backside backer Harris, who has already scraped, he, I mean, he diagnoses it quickly yeah. from the opposite hash. And now look at him. He's all the way, you know, between the hashes now. And really, he kind of overplays it. Yeah. Because McClendon you know, comes off late and runs him out. And, Matt, um, this, you know, you're looking at this scrum right here and all these red hats on a crimson helmet. Yeah. And I just thought I'd get you to comment on this, how all it takes is one breakdown and this play right. doesn't happen. It could be it could be backside. I fall down. It could be um, it could be all the way the backside tight end. Let's Will Anderson under. I don't I don't block him. He yeah. runs it down from behind. Any of these don't happen. This play doesn't happen, does it? That's right. It it really it requires everybody. You have to know. Like this is a great look at it. So the right guard and tackle Salyer. See that tackle. The, the defensive tackle is on just on his outside shoulder. McClendon. He's just going to step down, and he's going to try to put that three technique who's on his outside shoulder to where he's either centered up or knocking all the way to the inside of Salyer so that he can climb up to the second-level back. Yeah. You've got your left guard and Schaefer, number 54, pulling, and he's going to kick out this edge defender. If you can back it all the way up, Matt, you'll see that the tight end, this right tight end, watch him bluff just yeah. a little bit on that yeah. defensive end. He's trying to keep him wide. He wants him to feel as if, oh, I got a block to play. Maybe he's trying to pin me down. So you want him to just feel that enough to where he's, mm -hmm. he's not got his feet underneath him. He doesn't read it. He's not looking for a puller. So it sets up really well. Schaefer, the pulling guard, does a good job of keeping his hat upfield. If he gets his hat downfield and allows that defensive end to slip back inside of him, it's, it's, a, it's a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. So the hat placement is excellent by the right guard. The pull and tackle, Broderick Jones does a good job. Of, he doesn't throttle down. He runs all the way into the hole so that the back doesn't have to stop his feet in the backfield. If you don't run through that hole as a puller, then the back is faster than you already. Yeah. So he's running right up on your taillights, and you don't want him to stop his feet because of you. But what Cook does a great job of here is he gets up in the line of scrimmage and then he feels this backside cut. And it's possible because McClendon bounces off of that down block, that double team, up to the second level and rides Christian Harris wide. They sealed off the backside and he jukes. Basically, again, you've got mm -hmm. a, a, a safety in the hole and Cook does a great job of bouncing that run once he's through the line of scrimmage back into the boundary. Right, Matt, and and I want to go back to one thing that, to me, you, you see it all, and there's so many little things that make all the difference that 
honestly, it never even makes it on a broadcast a lot of times because you can't. But for instance, okay, it's very intentional that that tight end steps inside, as you said, jukes him inside and then goes next level. But also the footwork of this guard and tackle on this yeah. combo. Yeah, can you that's speak, a great point. Can you, all right, so if you watch the left foot of 70, yeah. if he steps over and steps on his buddy's foot right here, even though they've practiced it 8 million times and the coach is right. doing it, if he gets <laughs> – if he's out of whack and he lunges and steps on 60, his buddy's foot, they get knocked over. They get tied That's up. right. You know, That's and right. watch, 69, you know, it's very intentional. His knee is in front of that right foot of 69 so they don't get tangled up. 69 pulls his foot out of there, and here we go inside. I mean, these are – at six. that's about 700 pounds of people yeah. tiptoeing around each other in a half second only because they've done this 8 million times at practice. And it's, you could take two good athletes from high school and they've never practiced this and tell them to do it. Just step all over each other. Yes, sir. It's, this is, it's a, it's a heck of a point. Cause I'll add, let's say a thousand. Cause that defensive lineman's a part of this dance too. He just doesn't know it. Yeah. So the whole, like this left guard, the reason he steps inside like that is he wants that defensive tackle to feel it. He's like, wait a minute, this guy might be cutting me off. The play might be to the left side of the offensive line of scrimmage. Mm. So I got to try to fight across his face to make this play. So you step inside at guard, one, to give your tackle room mm. to step down as well, but also, two, so that that three technique, that defensive tackle on your outside shoulder, you want him to start moving inside. That's where you want him to go. Yeah. So my first step is going to be inside. That second step I take, it's not going to be inside. I'm, I'm not cutting you off. Now, now that I got you leaning that way, I want to throw you that way. That tackle, he's mm -hmm. going to try to do exactly what he does. He tries to put that defensive lineman, take him exactly where he started to go on his own when he felt the guard go inside of him. Uh-oh, I better squeeze my gap or try to get across his face. Tackle saying, fantastic. That's exactly where I want you to go. Salyer does just a good enough job of keeping that D-tackle tied up. And then McClendon does a really good job of bouncing off late after the tackle is secured, the defensive tackle is secured, to cover up Christian Harris, who diagnosed this play real quick. And then he escorts him to the outside, and Cookie picks up that block. All right, I want to thank Matt Stinchcomb for collaborating with me on this and being willing to give us some time, watch this film, tell us his thoughts. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I really did as well. And you can follow him on Twitter if you don't already. He's mstench79, so give him a follow. Hey, and if you like this, I hope you consider subscribing and maybe click that bell for notifications because Matt and I worked on another video together looking at Charles Cross, the offensive tackle out of Mississippi State, who is a projected first round pick, early first round pick. And we watched some of his film together and Matt, a former first round pick himself, kind of took a look at why Charles Cross is getting such a high grade coming out this year for the NFL Draft. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.